Hey, I'm Travis. And I'm Adele. And we're with The Noble Marriage. We're here to inspire your marriage and impact marriages globally through some skills such as improved communication. Yeah, and we're helping couples discover true love and intimacy as God intended. So thanks for joining us today. All right, part two with Adele and Travis. Let's pick up. So if you haven't listened to part one of this, go back and listen to part one. It's going to make sense when you listen to part two. So part two, let's pick up. It's January 2020. You're in a new location. And then tell me tell me what at January 2020, what's, what's the culture like? What's the vibe like? Give us a snapshot of that. Amazing. <laughs> Things were going so well. All our team members were really happy. Um, I think the, the thing that we didn't think through enough was moving from one location to a, a, an automatic upscale salon because the decor was completely different. It meant we had to actually deliver a higher end service. And we did okay. not think that through like we should have. And so when we went into this new space, we were figuring out our systems as we got in there. And so January, February, and March went really, really well without hardly any hiccups. But we were starting to experience hiccups around March in our level of, of service that our guests were expecting us to give our, our team wasn't measuring up to that. And so we had to start to revamp, like how do we really raise that to an upscale? And so we made that decision over COVID, which was the worst time to do that. Because when we came back from COVID, not only were we dealing with so many guests on our, on our books, but we were also trying to deliver a higher end service and guests were not pleased and things started to kind of fall apart and really the main thing that happened that was such a pivot for us was we lost our support staff and that was our associate stylists that were assisting our main stylist they one i don't think we were paying them enough and two they were now expected to deliver a higher end service that they didn't they weren't really hired on for that in the beginning and they didn't want that and there's nothing wrong with that right it's losing i think we lost 5 or 6 it within 2 weeks right after we came back from covid and it put us in such a pickle with our guests we had way too many guests on the book not enough service providers. They didn't have the help they needed. And I was bogged down with like all the financial stuff that we had just went through with COVID. We were trying to do unemployment and PPP and I'm trying to rewrite our systems. And so I was making changes that they weren't prepared for. They would kind of find out after the fact because there were so many moving parts and then we all had different schedules because we expanded our hours. It was just way, way, way too much to be our first year in a building and going through COVID at the same time. And I think that was what really started to fall apart. Were you gonna add? Mm. That, that, yeah, that, that is heartbreaking hearing that because I've never heard it I don't know if I knew that bit. Now you're not behind the chair at this point. Let's back up. When yeah. did you step away from being behind the chair? I was just talking about this and, and how God orchestrated this whole thing. So in 2018, I ended up with emergency back surgery and it took me out. I had 12 weeks of recovery and it was awful. And I tried to go back behind the chair and physically I found out I just could not do it with my back. And so I really struggled with my identity. Who am I if I can't do hair? And I was trying to kind of transform that in myself of, well, now my main goal is to be a leader. And so I really did start working on leadership at that time because I had the available time to now invest in that. 
Um, but then I had a second surgery in December of 18. And that was after that, I just couldn't stand for more than two or three hours behind the chair. Mm. 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 Yeah, that sounds painful. And back surgery is no joke. It is. Um, especially, especially when you're young like us. I mean, right. maybe, maybe we're not so young. Maybe we're the... You know, I feel <laughs> when you're like 18, now. it's like, whoa, in your 30s, right. that's when you start having back problems. Right. Um, so let's fast forward to 2021. Mm -hmm. So now you've come back from COVID. Um, you've lost five to six people. You're you're hiring. I, you, we we both were hiring. I saw the ads. Um, so let's skip to 2021. 2021, do you feel like you're getting through it? Do you feel like you're still hitting wrote like uh speed bumps hmm. are you questioning is this something we should still keep doing what does 2021 look like well over the remainder of 2020 we continued to lose employees and we were trying to hire but things were just falling through like we would hire somebody new and they would stay two months and then quit or stay four months and quit and we kind of stayed in this cycle for months and months and could not figure out what the problem was. And so 2021, we were making it, um, but it wasn't going great. And our team was really starting to voice, we don't have the help that this is set up for. And it was, that's true, we didn't. And we were trying and it just wasn't happening. There's a lot of things that comes to my mind. Like one is everything she just said. Plus we were trying to do all this HR stuff, human resource stuff within our company, because when you have that many employees and that many opinions, um, we ended up having to change our rules so many times and try to live, try to create a new culture and different culture. And oh. it became like really taxing. I remember January, we had January, 2021, we had like a business meeting. We have it every, every beginning of every year. I didn't feel great about it. I had this, I don't even know if I share this with you. I had this like thing inside of me, like, ah, oh, man, I just don't mm -hmm. feel good about this. And I don't feel like that we're going where we need to go. And I don't feel like, we are accomplishing what we are as what we need to be doing as leaders. And I just felt like it wasn't going to work out. And then it seemed like everything was uphill that we were yeah. trying to do. Everything was hard. Everything was pushing doors open to get through. And it just seemed like a struggle for everything. And I want to say that um, we had... <laughs> This was a major issue over this year was we had people pushing the limits on on guidelines that we had set up and had had for years that worked. And because the limits were so pushed, new rules had to be created. And what I should have done is when somebody leaves, reevaluate what kind of rules did they create here and right. and let's reevaluate those. Rather, I felt like I needed to continue with all these rules. And so it became this like all this accountability. And I was like, why can't people just be adults? <laughs> you know, I feel like I'm having to hold everybody accountable for all these rules I never wanted to begin with. Yeah, that's and that's so powerful, Adele, that yeah. you had all these issues and you're putting all these rules on. And you probably had people that were right in the right culture and they're going, why are we putting all these rules in? Like, yes. Yeah, I, I yes. know that frustration for sure. So let's let's skip to uh, let's see. When did I when when was I in your company? Was that? That was uh, the very beginning of August, like August 2nd, 2021. Okay, tell us about August first. Where's give us a um, where the state of the the salon? Where's it at? We were down to I think five team members by then, and uh, we had several team members uh, that were choosing the you know sabbaticals and uh, some time off that was already pre-planned, and we had two service providers, and then three support right. plus Travis and I. And um, 
one of them was going on a sabbatical and the other one was going to be by herself, literally, which meant she was going to be doing all the training with me. And it was, we had like, I don't know, five or six interns at the time. And I think it just really overwhelmed her to the point where um, she got overwhelmed and burnt out. Yeah. Yeah. So. And and to mention, you you guys were having all these new guests call in, and you're having to send them other places, which is not what you want to do as a business. No. And you know, we had people that would come to our salon. I'm like, how'd you hear about us? They're like, oh, Salon Adele sent us. And I'm like, I was happy, but I was also like heartbroken at the same time because yeah. I'm like, this is not, this is not a bullseye. So you have a flood of people coming in; they can't get in. So you're having to send them to other salons in yep. the area. So you guys reached out to me and said, Hey, can you come in and evaluate our systems, our guest experience, um, mm -hmm. things like that. So I come in and I think we met at like nine o'clock that morning. So I come in mm -hmm. with like hundred percent energy and you guys unlock the door and I say, Hey, what, how are we doing? And you're like, not good. And I was like, not Oh gosh. <laughs> and, uh, you got, you said, sit down. And so we sat down and I've never seen two people. I've never seen anybody in like complete shock. Like don't mm -hmm. even know what the next thought is. Yep. And then tell our listeners, you know, what you communicated to me in that point, in that moment. Yeah. We had walked in the back door and I just happened to notice that my license was the only one on the board. And I was like, what? Hmm. I, that's not good. And so he went and was looking in lockers and our, our last stylist had put her key in her locker and we walked into that and yeah, we were just like, we don't even know why we have no clue what happened. Um, we don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> that's where, you know, we were really stuck. Right. Yeah. And it, it, it was, it was literally, it was a blessing that I was there. Cause in that moment, I'm like, what am I doing here? And we sat down and, we're, and we were like, all right, w I was reading this book and I believe his name's Bob. I can't remember his last name. I think the book's called ride of a lifetime. He was a CEO of Disney. He said, when you are going through something and it's a chaotic it's chaos, he said, it's a puzzle piece. And so you have to find the next puzzle piece. You can't think about the puzzle piece you're going to do at the end. It's the next one. And so in that moment, I remember saying that I'm like, all right, let's find the next puzzle piece and let's put it on the table. And so we got a plan together of what we're going to do. And later that day, you had your staff coming in and they were coming in for training and you were opening up later that day. So you guys give us what, what was going on inside of your mind? I know you guys were completely wrecked, but I want our listeners to hear it straight from you guys. First, I just want to tell you, I'm so glad you were there. Yes, like you point. prayed over us immediately and you prayed for peace and wisdom. And I felt that mm -hmm. I really did. Um, having to teach a class to my team was probably the hardest mm. thing I've ever had to do of, cause I knew I couldn't let them know. I had no idea what was going on. So I couldn't really let on to that yet. Um, and so I pushed through that as best that I could. Um, wow. and then I, I just needed, I needed to get out really. I needed some alone time to process. And I don't know if you remember this, but I just kept sitting at that table as we were trying to figure out what to do next. And I'm like, I, I think this is a sign. Yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't get past, like, I don't know how we're going to move forward. And I really feel like this is something we need to look at. Th sure. At that moment, did you know, like, it's over, like it's done? Or were you still working through that? I knew because I knew I didn't have it in me to start over. And financially for our listeners, financially, like you're, you're, how many staff do you have at this point? Five, four, four, and none of them are income producing. Okay. So they're, they're either support staff, 
front desk, mm-hmm. something like that. So at this point, yeah. you don't you don't have anyone who could take care of the guests that could come in. So it's Never. either grind it out, start hiring, start from scratch. And you guys, let's let's pause for a second here. You guys have had a calling that you've had this other fire lit. Tell our listeners about what that is um, that's happened before what you're doing now, basically. So I felt called into ministering to men in early 2019, uh, specifically husbands and fathers. And then as we have walked our journey together through our own marriage, which I can, I can talk more about that if you want me to, but as we walked through our own marriage and healing in our marriage, we just felt this passion for other marriages. And I don't know, maybe a year ago, uh, we felt called March. in March of 2021, we felt called specifically into marriage ministry. And we have no idea what that looks like. Or how we're going to do that with a, a salon that is needing us. Like yeah. we can't step away at right. this point. Right. And so we were kind of just like, okay, God, if this is meant to be, you're going to have to show us where, to, what to do. And he did. It was really cool um, because he brought a couple to us and they asked us to do their premarital coaching. And it's something that we've never done, but we have all the tools to do it. And so we said, yes, we'll do it. And we created this nine week transformational course for couples to go through either as pre-marriage or during marriage at any point in time. It is such an amazing course. And they had such a good result from Mm -hmm. it. Um, And and they would have rated their marriage or, you know, their relationship pretty high until they found out what they didn't know about communication and relationships. And so we were doing all that on the side just because we enjoy it and it's a passion. And then um, when this happened to us in August, we were like, okay, this could be where we're supposed to be in marriages and not in the salon anymore. And so that night when we talked over and was processing and there were lots of tears and fear and like what's ahead, I still felt this calming peace that we were exactly where Mm. we needed to be and that God was going to walk us through every single step along the way. Wow. Yeah. Remember earlier I said that it seemed like the salon, we had to push doors open to get through. In this season of our life, it is more like the doors are already open and we walk through them. It's unreal the difference that we are seeing. That's amazing. That's awesome. So mm-hmm. let's let's get back to where that day I came in. You know, you had to you had to teach class for your um, for the the employees of the company that evening. I think you guys talked because you guys reached out to us um, about the company. And so I was like, oh, my gosh, this is happening. When did you know that, like, okay, this is not our next step and we need to close the salon? I knew that we could start over. And I knew that my heart just wasn't in it anymore. Um, My mom had made a comment to me. Do you think God allowed all those team members to leave for you to start disconnecting. And that's exactly what happened during COVID was I felt my heart and my passion disconnecting. Um, Otherwise I would have never walked away. And I feel like if things wouldn't have happened on that day, like they did, I would have found a way to move forward. And I think, I think that's the way God allowed it to be like so sudden to be like such a clear sign for us. Otherwise, I'm just the type of person, I don't give up. I'm gonna just push forward and I'll do whatever it takes. Um, And I just knew I didn't have it in me anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to share something too. Like, it could seem like we're here complaining about COVID and all the things through COVID and the business and all that. But here's something I've really come to realize is through those challenges, 
I am so thankful, so grateful for those challenges we went through. It's kind of like what Paul says, when, when life seems so hard, I can boast more. I can, I can be more in, 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 in Jesus. Um, when there's challenges, when there's tough times and we learned so much through COVID. We've learned so much through closing of closing and reopening and during quarantine. We've learned a lot about releasing control. Mm -hmm. We've learned a lot about ego and pride and allowing that to leave us um, through the crucial conversations that we've had with so many employees coming and going. It's just been an amazing learning and trading ground to where we could not be doing what we're here doing today. We could not be effective in what we're trying to do as leaders had we not gone through those storms. Wow. Yeah. Wow. A lot of people never get there, guys. <laughs> people usually don't get there. They, they get bitter and they think about what well, this happened and this happened and now I'm here and you guys are seeing the opportunity. And it's like, what's the big mm -hmm. picture here? Yes, this happened. But what's to learn um, from all of this? Adele, were you going to say something? Yeah, I was going to say um, that first day when we talked, we said, this is happening for us mm. and not to us. Because there were two ways we could go about it. We could be victims and this happened to us and woe is me and all of that that comes with it. Um, or it happens for our good and let's look for that. And so that's what we started looking for is the good that was happening in the middle of that trial. Um, and literally the right people were brought to us at the right time, exactly when we needed it to give us direction in which way to go. I and mean, we had pivotal phone calls that helped us decide it's time to close. Um, and lots of prayer, <laughs> a yeah. lot of prayer during that yeah. time. You guys were seeking wisdom. You guys were talking to everyone you could, because um, you know this was a big decision. Oh yeah, and it exactly. not, that was our livelihood. And it did, yeah, it was your livelihood, and it didn't just affect you; it affect other people. And I knew that was right. that was the most heartbreaking for you both. So, um, what what were some of the lessons learned? from all of this? I know we talked about a few of those. I was telling Travis, I think for me, um, it, I was humbled in a way that I really needed to be humbled. Ooh. And I look back over the salon and, and it started out really like I could see God in everything in my business before we opened the salon. And then I think somewhere along the way it became, look what I did look what we've done. And my pride just got in the way of that. And um, so having closed a salon that was successful mm -hmm. could have really been humiliating versus I was just very humbled in that this wasn't about me to begin with. <laughs> and now that I see where God has called us now into marriage ministry, I can't do that with pride. And I think closing that closing the salon is what I really needed in order to be able to go do what God has called us to do. Wow. So that for me was the biggest thing that I really got. Oh man, what an what a outlook and what a mindset. What yeah. a mindset. What feedback did you get, you know, from your team? And what were the some of the first like warning signs, maybe? So let's, let's break down the first one. What, what was the feedback you got your team? Obviously you told your team, what was the feedback you got from them? Shocked. Yeah, it, it was shocking because the way it was done, it was kind of difficult to get everybody to hear the information. And I wanted them to hear it before public knew or before our guests knew. And so the best way we could do that is do a zoom call. Uh, and get everybody on board to do that, to, to hear. And it was shock. It was like, what in the world is going on? Because to them, it seemed like it's a healthy company and we're profitable. And they knew we had some, you know, challenges with hiring and stuff, but they didn't know the, the extent of if we don't have main service providers that are at 
a certain quality for a luxury salon, then we can't charge the prices we charge. And so, so many things would have to be wiped out and that that's not in their wheelhouse out because it's yeah. more of a leadership thing. So it was shock. It was like, mm -hmm. oh, wow. And I want to say like the culture that we had at the end was the best culture we've ever had. Mm -hmm. Like the people that we ended with were the right people on our team. And that was the hardest part about having a close is I saw so much potential in this team and our culture. Yeah. And I'm like, it's the best it's ever been. I don't want to just walk away from that. And yeah, it just wasn't meant to be either. Yeah. And man, I still feel, I feel like those girls gave it their freaking all. They did. I mean, they were hard working. When people would leave, they would take up the slack. And man, we had some amazing team members. They just got burned out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were there were there any warning? Because I feel like the story is a little bit different than most people think. They they're gonna mm -hmm. think like, because you guys were like, hey, God's called us to something different. Yeah. And. So I love that, you know, we're sitting down having this conversation because like I said in uh, the beginning of part one, like you guys are going to help so many other people, not just in what you're doing now, but just through this conversation. Because there's mm -hmm. a lot of people sitting where you guys were sitting three, four months ago. What would you tell those people if they, if the, if the, say the husband and wife sat down in front of you guys right now and they're dealing with the same things you dealt with months ago, what would you say to them? I, something that came to my mind was I, I wish we would have had conversations about how much do we want to grow? Where is that stopping point? <laughs> because I think Travis and I were constantly like, grow, grow more. We're going to grow more because we never really had that conversation. And so I wish we would have just we wouldn't have upscaled as much as we did. And I wish we would have had a point where we're like, we're good here. Mm. And just and be happy at that place instead of like in search of that next castle. And then we got to get to the next castle. Okay, let, let's pause right here because I, I think I know what you're saying. Are you talking about physically you should have stayed at your other location instead of going to this larger location? Or are you talking Maybe something in between? Because okay. we made such a massive jump and I knew we couldn't do it without the team members that we had. So when we started losing team members, that never crossed my mind that that would happen. And so yeah. we ended up in a place where we couldn't afford the building anymore because we didn't have our team. And I wish we would have just had conversations ahead of that instead of like, we're just going to go, we're going to do it because we're going to keep growing constantly. Yeah. So that would be one thing is just have those conversations. What is success to you? Like, mm -hmm. how do you define success? Mm. And then just be happy when you get there. Mine would be seek out wisdom. Um, seek out uh, people who who are on your side to give you the wisdom in a safe place. Mm -hmm. And um, pray. Pray for that, that wisdom to be given to you. And then another one is give yourself some grace too. Yeah. As, mm -hmm. as owners uh, know that any other owner, they may or may not seem like they're struggling through, through life and what they're doing, but we're all going through the same thing. Everybody is, uh, is in their own trials in life. And there's other people out there like, like us who, who have experienced things and you can get wisdom from, from those people. Yeah. That's awesome. What what are some things you look back at and you're like, man, that was freaking awesome. It might have been a system or something you inputted in the company, or it might have been something that was uh, between you and a staff member that you impacted them in a way that you mm -hmm. maybe didn't think you would impact them that way. I'll answer first. Okay. The best thing I ever did was get engaged with the guest and the team in a personal level. The best thing I ever did. I remember being at the old salon and I didn't know their name, the guest names. Um, I didn't, wasn't really concerned about that because I was thinking I am running a business. I'm taking care of the business as a whole. I'm not really engaged with, because I'm not a service provider. 
the get the the team members can handle the names of the guest or conversation but it wasn't until i really what's important to me was people it wasn't before it was profitability or running a business but when people mm. became important the best thing I ever did was get engaged and learn their life and support them and encourage them. And then when the team, when the guest comes in, find out who they are and have conversation with them. That's the best thing I've ever done. I would agree. Beautiful. With that. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to agree with him because I started doing the same thing and I, I started feeling like I could actually be myself around my team. And um, when I started doing that, I started seeing them look at me different and me look at them different as though it's a partnership and not, you know, me, a me and Travis show. Yeah. Yeah. I found that when I learn how to serve, when I serve people, mm -hmm. it brings me joy. Yes. Yeah. And it leaves a happy customer <laughs> every time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, how did, how did you, we haven't talked about this. How did your guests react? Were they like, you know, yeah. um, throwing a strike in the parking lot and throwing, you know, um, mm -hmm. rocks through the window, <laughs> upset? They were heartbroken. And honestly, I wish I would have known how much they loved us. Mm -hmm. I really had not a clue. So true. Um, we found out after the fact how much we were appreciated and loved and the difference that our salon made for women. I mean, so many people. I wish we would have known that. <laughs> And that would be what I would encourage people is when somebody makes a difference in your life, a business or people, let them know because it's so encouraging. That would have been so encouraging during those hard times. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, that's a good point in marriage and in relationships is if, if I'm grateful for you, share it. Yeah. If I am, if I love you, share that too. Whatever comes to my mind to share, share it. Because uh, people, everybody's is uh, in a certain season of their life, or they have certain pain points in their life, and whenever you share things with people, they don't know it unless you tell them. Yeah. And it just helps us go through our life. It literally carried us through that. Like I didn't have many tears because I was so overwhelmed with the the many messages that we got that were so loving and just supporting and so i feel like it carried us through yeah. yeah that's awesome you guys this conversation has been amazing it went better than i i i had high expectations I even met that because you guys are just so genuine <laughs> you're transparent that's why i wanted to bring you on because seeing you guys smile right now like i'm gonna get choked up because i've seen you guys you know mm. just shocked and like oh my gosh we're about to lose this thing that that Adele, it was a dream of yours. And you're like, you, yeah. you go and it's just like, is this the end? I mean, that's hard to contemplate, but it's not the end. It's the, it's the season no. and life is, that's a, right. life is a season. And so I would love for you. I know we got a few more minutes. I want you to tell people um, what you're doing now. I know we hit on a little bit, but the name of the company, where they can find you at, cause you guys are killing the YouTube game. Um, let's take like a minute and for you guys to tell everyone what you're doing now. So we uh, started the company called The Noble Marriage. And I originally got the vision of The Noble Project and The Noble Man in 2019 as a company to start. And so we just went with that same name of The Noble Marriage. And what we're out to do is we had 12 years of marriage that did not work. Mm -hmm. And then we've had three years of marriage of restoration and healing and um, God has really blessed us in how to communicate and relate to each other. And we want to pour into other marriages. Uh, so what we're doing is we're interviewing, <clears throat> we're interviewing other marriage influencers, people who are making a difference in marriage. And then Adele and I are debriefing those interviews and talking about how it relates to our marriage. And in the hopes that someone is going to get something out of that and restore their marriage, because frankly, it's way too many marriages are starting and ending in divorce. And uh, so we're 50% right now mm. in the U.S. Mm. And we're, we're out to change that. 
Yeah, and we primarily work with couples and help them discover blind spots that they have in their life and in their relationship so that they can be aware of them and transform them through the process. And so it's about getting freedom and uh, really getting whole and complete individually so that I can yeah. show up for my partner the best that I can be. Yeah. Um, so definitely check us out on YouTube because that's where we're, we're having all these authentic, transparent conversations. <laughs> Some of them are a little uncomfortable for us and we're working through that. <laughs> I love that you but, guys are um, going after it. Just take attacking the, the ones that make you feel uncomfortable. So how can they find you on YouTube, Instagram, and all social media? Yep. So everywhere it's the noble marriage. It's either .com or on Instagram, same thing, YouTube, same thing. And then we have a brand new TikTok that is the noble marriage. Awesome. You got to be on yeah. TikTok. That's where all the cool kids are. So, hey, right. you guys, um, I can't say enough great things about you. What I love about you guys is the light shines brighter in you than it's on you. And so wherever wow. you guys go, you're going to make an impact. So, I love that you have the mindset of like, this is, this would cripple a lot of people. And I believe yeah. you're going to come in contact with people where they're going to be in the same situation, maybe not salon or they, you know, they might just be like, all this stuff is happening to me and you're going to be, a, yeah. you're going to be there to pick them up. You're going to be that coach that you had for you. Mm -hmm. And that's what life is. It life is, it's yeah. picking yourself up and moving forward. And then when somebody else falls down, you pick them up. So thank you guys just for being just beautiful humans and um, just doing work that makes a difference. I appreciate you guys. Thank you, thank Evan. You. And I we, appreciate you. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. We so appreciate you and Aaron. <laughs> yeah, you've made such a difference in our life, too, and the wisdom and the, the prayers and friendship that you have brought mm -hmm. has really lifted us up in times when we really need it. Yeah. So thank you. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Hey, love you guys. Thanks for being on Touch the Line podcast. Yeah, thanks for having us. Hey, you're not finished yet. We're here to make a difference and inspire your marriage and other marriages as well. And if you found value in these videos, leave us a comment and let us know what that was so we can make other videos similar to that. We would love for you to join our community of awesome, like-minded people. They are awesome. Go ahead and hit subscribe and you'll get daily motivational videos that impact your life and inspire you to be your best self. This also helps us get our message out to marriages all over the world. So thank you so much for subscribing and joining our community.